Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Pitt, Ohio, Driving Innovation with Cisco and Rocky. Next slide. So for today's webinar, we are first going to give a quick introduction, then I'll speak a little bit more about Cisco Meraki. At that point in time, the Pitt Ohio team will share their experience with Meraki's products, and they will also do a live demo. Then we'll do an overview of Meraki's different product families and open up the floor to Q&A. Next. So at this point in time, I'd like to give a brief introduction. So all eligible attendees on today's webinar will receive a free AP, and the free AP that we're giving out is the Cisco Meraki MR33 with a three-year cloud management license. And for full eligibility details, you can go to meraki.cisco.com slash free AP. Next. In order to claim your free device, make sure that you review the eligibility requirements online, and then after that, connect with your Meraki rep and confirm your business shipping address. Next. So at this point in time, I would like to give a brief overview of Cisco Meraki. So we offer a complete cloud-managed IP solution that includes wireless, switching, security, SD-WAN, application performance management, unified endpoint management, and security camera products. Today, we are the leader in cloud-managed IP, and we are among Cisco's fastest-growing portfolios. At this point in time, we have over 250,000 unique customers worldwide, and there are over 3.5 million Meraki devices online, as well as over 5.5 million active Meraki dashboard users throughout the world. Next. At this point in time, I would like to introduce the Pitt Ohio team. Hello, Kristen. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Norm Titino. I work for a transportation company called Pitt Ohio. Our core business is LTL, or less than truckload. We were incorporated by the Hamill family in 1979. Through various partnerships, Pitt Ohio also provides truckload, ground, and supply chain services for our customers. Our core LTL coverage area is depicted on the map of this slide, but we also ship throughout North America with a group of partners. Our headquarters are based out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Currently, we have over 3,100 employees. Our revenue is over 700 million a year. We have over 50 IT employees. Our IT staff at Pitt, Ohio consists of three different groups. We have an infrastructure team, a team of application specialists, and a team of developers. The team I'm on is the network team. We are a part of the infrastructure group. Currently, we have four members on the network team. Our relationship with Meraki started years ago when it was time to refresh our wireless network at Pitt, Ohio. Every time we implement something new, we go through a multi-vendor selection process to pick a solution that best fits us. At the time, we were looking for a solution that had both analytical tools and something that helped us gain visibility without using third-party products. We wanted a product that was easy to deploy so we have more time to work on other things. We wanted a solution that would help us streamline firmware and security updates. We were also looking for a company that keeps up on innovation and advancements in technology. When we look at new technologies, we try our best to see if we can leverage them to generate revenue or provide some type of cost savings. Meraki initially caught our eye because of the buzz that we were hearing about them. That and the fact that if you sign up for a webinar, you can get a free access point like this webinar today. Free hardware is always a great way to grab an IT professional's attention, so kudos to Meraki for that. The webinar I attended years ago got me very interested in Meraki products. It was shortly after that webinar that we started deploying Meraki APs throughout Pitt, Ohio. 
For Pitt, Ohio, we deployed Meraki access points to 23 of our locations. In our office areas, we use a mix of MR32 and MR33s. We use MR72s on our docks. We have an MX100 at our corporate location that is used for tunneling guest traffic and mobile device access directly to the internet. U.S. Cargo is one of our parcel or small package divisions. At U.S. Cargo, they just need internet access to conduct business. The access points we have there are a mixture of MR12, MR32, and MR33s. We have MS220 switches for their thin clients and printers. Each location has an MX appliance. For sites that need wireless access in the office area, we use MX65Ws. For sites that have multiple access points, we use MX100s. Trapino is a restaurant located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We assist with managing their network through a joint ownership is how we ended up supporting them. We use MR32s at this location. The APs are used for corporate access, guest access, and the Chapino servers use tablets connected to the Wi-Fi network there to take orders. They use MS220 switches for their printers and point-of-sale systems. They also have MX65 security appliance. Our corporate test network um, was initially set up for IT-related purposes so we can test various technologies that can't be tested on our production network. We also ended up sharing this network with a startup company that needed internet access. We were notified on short notice that they needed some type of internet access for their laptops. We decided to set up a few APs that we had in stock and their business was up and running within a half hour. When I first started looking at Meraki, I really thought they would be tailored towards small businesses. After implementing Meraki products, I came to a realization that it would be a good fit for a mid-sized enterprise like Pitt, Ohio, but also be a good fit for small businesses such as Chapino. So some of the results that we've seen were very positive from the Meraki implementations that we've done. With Meraki, we've gained more visibility into our network without using uh, third-party software tools because Meraki has both analytic and troubleshooting tools built right into the dashboard. Network deployments with Meraki takes far less time to deploy compared to other technologies we've implemented. Our Pitt Ohio wireless deployment was less time consuming compared to what we originally expected. With our old wireless solution, it was harder to deploy without being on site. Since we had so many different tools built into the dashboard, it wasn't necessary for us to travel to each location to deploy. When we set up a network, for U.S. Cargo, for example, we have to configure an MX appliance, MS switches, and access points. What's nice with those deployments is that we can set up the equipment at our corporate office, test it, and send it to the site. We walk users through plugging in the internet connection, and after that, they're up and running. Rocky has helped us save time and also reduce the amount of travel we have to do. Meraki gave us the ability to schedule firmware and security updates, which saved us a ton of time. We can schedule updates to be kicked off during a maintenance window, and it's nice that we don't have to be on site or work remotely to make sure updates are completed. I think Meraki does a great job with releasing new features. There was a, a few features that were released that helped us solve some technical limitations that we've experienced. In the live demo, I'll talk more about how Meraki helped us solve one of the technical limitations that we are up against at U.S. Cardio. Anytime we work on a technology, technology refresh or a new implementation, we try to see if we can reduce costs or generate revenue. With our MR72s that we have on our docks, we found a way to generate revenue for the company. We have scales that are on four trucks that weigh freight. Once that freight is weighed, the data from the scales is sent over our wireless network to a database at our corporate office. A team within Pitt, Ohio looks at the data and determines if the freight from our customers weighs more than expected. If it does, we bill our customers the additional freight charges based on that additional weight. That has generated $8.7 million in 2016 and $9 million in 2017, so additional revenue we got. We are currently looking into purchase the MV security cameras later this year. We want to put these in our 
data center and IDFs throughout the company. One reason for the camera deployment is your obvious security reasons. We also want to use the cameras at our remote sites to walk users through troubleshooting issues or even walking them through doing moves, ads, or changes. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the live demo. So what everybody is seeing right now is our Meraki dashboard. So as part of the deployment when we initially did the access points at our corporate location and our remote sites, we wanted to make sure that we had a product that gave us traffic analytics and also had troubleshooting tools built in. So I'm going to go ahead and go to network wide and go to traffic analytics. So what's really great about the uh, traffic analytics is we can go in here and we can select what we actually want to see. So for this example, we're going to go ahead and select our access points. And what's nice about this is that we can drill in even more. So we have an option to look at the last two hours and we can all, you know, go all the way back to the last 30 days. So let's go ahead and just select the last week. So what's nice, you know, with this uh, dashboard and compared to other, you know, software network monitoring tools that are out there is we can keep drilling in. So I could go even one step further and hitting the drop down for all SSIDs and I could select any of the SSIDs that we have on our network. So I'm going to go ahead and select PoE Net. So PoE Net is all of the uh, clients that are on our corporate network that are laptops. So as you can see, you know, it pulls up some nice client count graphs and also provide some usage graphs, which is really nice. And what I like the most is this bottom section here where it actually shows what applications are being used. So we could go down here and really analyze what type of traffic is on our network. So we do have, for the past week, you know, we have 10 gigs worth of traffic with Microsoft OneDrive. So maybe this is a problem. So for us, I know it is not a problem, but we'll say it is for uh, the purpose of uh, today. So I'm going to go ahead and drill into Microsoft OneDrive to get more information of what is going on. So if we look here, Meraki puts all kinds of information on this page for us. So they give us the name of the actual role. They also provide a category, which is file sharing. And what I like, too, is they also provide the actual ports that are being used by this application. So if we look over here on the right side, it also provides us with a nice graph. So if we look at the clients actually contributing to this specific role, we can see here that, you know, we have one person in particular that is maybe doing too much as far as OneDrive is concerned, and maybe we want to reach out to that person. So we could actually reach out to JBVPN2 if we wanted and ask them to kind of watch how much they're using OneDrive. Um, but if we wanted to drill in even further, we could. So I'm not going to actually click on JB VPN2 because it will give out personal information on this particular um, device that's on our network. But if we did drill in, it would provide us, you know, all the different information as far as this connected client. It will even tell us what access point we are connected to. So another requirement that we had when we were initially deploying at access points throughout our network is that we wanted troubleshooting tools that were built in. So I'm going to go back to network wide and I'm going to select packet capture. So, you know, if you are a network engineer or some type of engineer where you have to do a packet capture, you know, typically that, you know, you have to have make sure Wireshark's installed and then you have to go to maybe a switch where you're having the problem set up a monitoring port and go through all these different steps to actually do a packet capture. What's great about Meraki is they have the packet capture tool built right into the dashboard. So you can see here, I hit the drop down. You can see that we have security appliances that we can get packet captures on, access point switches, pretty much whatever is on our Meraki network. So I'm going to go ahead and select our access points. So we have an option here of doing a packet capture on all of our access points, but say we were able to narrow it down to a specific access point. We'll say that we're going to select the 
second floor corp north access point for the packet capture that we want to take. We can hit the drop down for interface. We can do our wireless or wired interface if we'd like. Uh, what I really like about this tool is the output options. So we can see that we have a couple options here. We can view the output below on the screen, or we could actually download it to a PCAP file so we can view it in Wireshark. Uh, maybe, and maybe also we want to keep this um, output too. Maybe we have to send it off to Meraki or something like that. So we have the option right on the dashboard to do that. We can set a time duration. So I'm going to go ahead and set this for two seconds. We can ignore broadcast packets, but we can also ignore multicast packets if we don't want to see that in our packet capture. And then the last section here is a filter expression. So if you really wanted to narrow down your search and didn't want to have a bunch of data show up in your packet capture, if you look on the right-hand side, if you're not sure how to do it, Meraki see, you know, sets examples for everybody. So you can actually set an expression and narrow down your search. So I'm going to go ahead and just start our packet capture. And what it will do is it will go through and provide a packet capture for us and provide all the data on the screen. So real nice tool that is built into the dashboard. Another tro troubleshooting tool that I like um, that's you know common uh, use that we have is the event log. So once the network wide, I'll go ahead and select the event log. So it's your standard event log, and of course you can select whatever type of device that you want to see events on. So we can even start drilling in, and I can drill in and say we want to look at that particular access point, and we'll uh, choose this client, GFVPN, to, to kind of get information on, say he's having trouble you know, getting on our wireless network. We can also set a date and time parameter. So I'm going to go ahead and click search. And this will bring back all the information that we have as far as events with this client. Sometimes it does take a minute because it's doing the search. So it did a search for us. It's pretty nice to provide us with a ton of data. Maybe it's just too much information to sift through. So we do have options here to actually just include certain information. So say uh, as part of this event log, we only want to see 802.11 association. So we'll go ahead and select that and click search. So in our search here, all the only thing that you see is the association. So on the flip side of things, say you're already doing troubleshooting and you don't want to see associations because you already viewed them there, you have the option of going to the event type ignore and selecting 802.11 association. We'll go ahead and do the search. And that will provide us with all the event information with the exception of 802.11. Now on this screen, if for whatever reason you want to keep this data, you could download it as a CSV or maybe management wants to see this for whatever reason, you can provide it that way. Another thing I like about Meraki is we can actually drill into an access point. I'm just going to select one of the access points we have in our production network. And you can do different troubleshooting through the access point. So I'm going to go ahead and just select this particular access point we have. And what's nice is the summary page of each access point provides you with a ton of information. So currently we don't have any clients connected to this, but you can see if we click up here on event log, it will provide us with all the events that have occurred on this network, or I'm sorry, actually on this access point. We can actually look at the location of the access point and see where it is in our corporate office. I'll kind of blow this up a little bit so you can see. So we can locate where the access point is. This section here for tools, it's kind of a nice little section, section that I really like. So you could do anything from ping the device or send pings from the device. You can reboot the device if you really needed to. Say that you, know, that you don't know what access point that you're about to unplug. You could blink the LEDs if you wanted to so you can properly locate the right access point. And you can do throughput tests, trace routes, and even look at your uh, ARP tables. So I'm going to go ahead and click on LAN. So what's nice about this section is it gives you general VLAN information, maybe different radius requests you have, everything that's going on in your LAN. So just a nice view. You can see how many failures or, you know, that you had on this network if you really wanted to see what's going on. Another nice tab that's on here is the RF section. So in the RF section, it is 
very nice tool where you could check out what's going on maybe on your 2.4 gigahertz radio or even your 5 gigahertz radio. And then you also have the option again to look at even live data here and then you could all, you know, go to the last month if you needed to uh, have some historical information based on what you're working on. So when we deployed at our corporate location, we put in an MX100 appliance. So the reason that we put this appliance in was we needed to somehow secure guest access and mobile device access, which would be company-owned mobile phones from touching our production network. So we did want to give these devices internet access, but we didn't want to give them anything else at this time. It's just a requirement that we had. So we worked with our bar and we worked with our Meraki team to come up with a solution. So what we did is we put an MX100 into our DMZ. And what we did is, I'm going to go ahead and head into our SSIDs that we have is that we basically tunneled all the traffic from our S, you know, our SSIDs for our guest network and our mobile network directly to this appliance so none of these devices that we're connecting would actually have access now and you know initially you're thinking as a network engineer okay this is always maybe a painstaking process you know if you do it on a router if you can copy and paste a config it'd be easy if you can you have to do a command line it might take a little bit longer say you do a, a vpn tunnel with a cisco asa you do have a nice wizard but you know you still have to go through a bunch of steps to create that vpn tunnel so once you put this appliance on your network from there it's very easy to do on this configuration overview page you can see under vpn we actually have a tunnel to our MX100. So let me go ahead and edit the settings on our guest network. And once we get in here, I'm gonna scroll down to our client IP assignment section and you see that we selected VPN tunnel data to a concentrator. So we selected that option and beneath there, there is a concentrator option, which if I click the drop down, you can see any of our MX appliances are in here and we can tunnel traffic um, to any of them if we really wanted to. But for these purposes, we did it to our corporate uh, MX appliance. So initially I didn't believe it was this easy and it really is. So, you know, if we just select that, click save and we were good to go. So. One other thing I want to mention about our guest network is that we used to go through, uh, the network team will go through and create guest accounts and kind of, we spent a lot of time doing that when we had people come into our corporate office and it just was a process that maybe another team could work on for us so we could work on other things. So our help desk took the responsibility of setting up the guest accounts once we put Meraki in and the way that we did it is I'm going to go up to network wide and I'm going to select administration. So what we did with our help desk folks is basically we gave them network admins access, but for each of these people, we only gave them guest privileges. So that allows them to approve guest access. So say we have someone that needs guest access, they connect to our guest network and when they connect, they go to a splash page where they create their own account. They are then instructed to contact our help desk. So from there, our help desk folks, they will have access to this guest management portal. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill into there. So you can see that this is what our help desk will see on their end. And what we'll do is whenever a guest calls in and says they need guest access, our help desk will you know, basically put a description in this field, but they also put a ticket in for um, this. So we have a way of tracking why John Fitch in this case needed access to the guest network that we have. Um, that way we can go through checks and balances, especially if this person starts doing something that they shouldn't do. So through the splash page, they did create their own username and they did create their own password. If we really wanted to, we could change this person's password if they happen to forget it. We also have an option to authorize or not authorize. So maybe we find out that this person's doing the, something they shouldn't, so we could just select no to not authorize them anymore. But when uh, our help desk actually sees this screen for the first time, no is selected and they select yes, so the person does have, have access. 
the last thing our help desk would do is set an expiration for this account. Um, so whenever this person would call in, they would say, you know, how many days they were going to be at Pitt, Ohio. This person's actually going to be here for a long time. I think they're a consultant uh, doing some work here. So they'll be here until July 2nd. So another nice option out there that Meraki just put in their dashboard to kind of help us out and give, um, you know, our streamline some of the work that we have to do. So when we were deploying at our corporate location um, and we started putting APs out there, we for totally forgot about the wireless phones that we have. So we are a Cisco Unified Communications uh, shop and we do have a bunch of 8821 wireless phones. So we did set up a SSID for them that we call POE-VoIP. So, you know, we were kind of concerned that, you know, Meraki didn't have QoS or we couldn't get configure QoS on here, but we actually can. So it's pretty nice. So let me go ahead and go to the QoS settings, and I'll do that by going to wireless and firewall and traffic shaping. So from here, let me go ahead and select that wireless network. So from here, what's very nice with Meraki is that we can do QoS. So we did set up a rule for any type of skinny traffic that it's going to be QoS. So what I really like about this is they do have all the DSCP tagging options in the dropdown. So you could really select anything you want as far as this type of traffic is concerned. So it might just be voice traffic that you need a class selector. Maybe it's something else you have to QoS and set up roles for. You can do that also. So another requirement that we specifically had as far as a new wireless provider for Pitt, Ohio is concerned is the fact that we wanted to streamline firmware updates. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into our security appliance. And I'm going to go down to the section that has the actual firmware update options. So if we look here, uh, we can actually see that there is a firmware update available, and we can see the current version of the firmware that we are on. So I'm going to go ahead and click the update available link here. And what's really nice about this is we have a couple different options as far as firmware upgrades are concerned. So right now for our security appliance, we do ignore the alert, but say we didn't want to ignore the, the or I'm sorry, ignore the actual firmware, uh, we could select perform the upgrade now. So what this will do is when we select this and then click save changes at the bottom, it will actually start the firmware upgrade process right now. So if you needed some type of firmware update that was critical to your business or you wanted to have some new option available, you could do that. Um, I just recommend that if you're going to do that, that you communicate that out to the proper people because the devices will need to reboot. So at Pitt, Ohio, we do have to you know, go through a whole change control process. We're pretty methodical with the way we do things. So we go through a change control process and we actually schedule the update. We do have, what's nice about our business is we do have a maintenance window on the weekends where we can do anything that we need to on our network. So we do like to schedule the update. So I did select the schedule the upgrade for, and if you look here, we can schedule for a specific date. Say we want to do it on the 29th. And since the 29th is Sunday, no one's really around at 4 a.m., so we could select 4 a.m. and actually schedule um, when we want to do this. So if we were to click Save Changes, we would have it scheduled and we'd be good to go. So knock on wood, we've yet to have any issues with firmware updates um, with anything on our Meraki network. But we, what we like to do just for checks and balances, whoever on our team schedules this particular firmware update, you know, they'll log into our Meraki dashboard, um, say Sunday morning, and just make sure all of our devices are online. A new section that was recently added um, that Meraki put up there was the firmware updates, uh, or I'm sorry, firmware upgrades section. 
So in this particular section, what's really great about this, and I don't know why Meraki didn't do it before. They didn't let their customers know what software version they were on, but I guess it became an important thing for customers to know. So as you can see, this is in beta, but we have all the information of the stable firmware releases for devices that are on our network. So you could even see that uh, Meraki shows the stable release candidates. And they also, for you cowboys out there, they have the beta software if you want to get it installed. So I always err on the side of caution, you know, keep with the stable releases. What's nice too about this is they actually show the release notes here of everything that is in this firmware version. So you have anything from bug fixes to actually known issues and then some other, of course, general performance uh, improvements. So pretty nice tool that Meraki just released and I really like to see the firmware versions that we're on just for troubleshooting purposes and to reference in the change controls that we create. So earlier on in the presentation, I kind of mentioned that we got into some technical limitations as far as our US cargo network is concerned. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the US cargo network. So we had some issues, and let me give everybody a background first. So I'm gonna go into our security appliance that we have, one of our locations. So with our security appliances at our locations, we have two different WAN interfaces, which is just internet interfaces. So here WAN one is just your cable DSL Fios connection that we have. And then for WAN two, our backup connection, we use cellular modems. We got into the practice of doing that once 3G was released and now 4G is out there, provides us with a ton of bandwidth. The reason that we do that, we always ran into a scenario where say we have a T1 at a location and we also have a DSL connection there. Someone hits a telephone pole, takes down both connections and then we're dead in the water. But with having a cellular backup, it really provides us with a, another way of providing internet where we don't have two lines on the same telephone pole. So it's been very successful. The only gotcha with that, of course, is the data caps that we could uh, come across. Meraki also, we don't have any of the devices, but Meraki does support on some of their devices a USB port for um, USB cellular modems if, if you wanted to go that route too. We decided to stick with the external modem. That way we can move the modem you know, put it in any location that provides us the best signal at each site. So the issue that we are coming across, especially it seems to be with cable providers and DSL providers where we don't have that clean cut, you know, network outage. It's always the network is bouncing up and down. So we were thinking about solutions that, um, that we could come up with and didn't really have a solution for that so we didn't have site bouncing up and down. Now each site is using Citrix, so anytime that you have that network bouncing, pretty much Citrix is unusable. So Meraki does have an option to do some traffic shaping. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into our security clients and go to traffic shaping. So what's really nice about this is we could go into here and we can actually select what we want to do as far as this is concerned. So you can see right here, our primary uplink is WAN 1, so you can also see WAN 2. So what we did to kind of get around this whole bouncing scenario and you know traffic bouncing between different links is we set up a custom performance class. So what this custom performance class does is it monitors the link and it would monitor WAN 1 for this instance. And what it would do is see if we have 15% packet loss. If we do, it will keep all the traffic going over our, our WAN2, which is our backup network. So th this is a setting that we've tweaked back and forth, but for us, it seems like 15% packet loss is re really a sweet spot for us as far as you know switching between primary and backup if the network is bouncing. So let's say you know it's four o'clock on a Friday and you have this bouncing, you have this weird condition, you just wanna go home for the weekend. Um, you could actually, by clicking on the primary uplink, you could select WAN2, which is our cellular network. You could select that, click save, 
And once you click save, that becomes your primary link. So, you know, you don't have to be on the phone all night troubleshooting with your provider or trying to find a sweet spot with your custom performance class. You can actually just let them run on backup network. So pretty nice thing that was released by Meraki sometime after we got the MX appliances. But, you know, this is just one example of Meraki always releasing new features for their customers. So we got into sort of a unique situation where we, through a joint ownership, we started setting up networks for a uh, company, or I'm sorry, a restaurant called Chapino. So I'm going to go into their appliance. And, you know, for my team, it was kind of a unique situation. We're just so used to dealing with the trucking industry that this allowed us to kind of step out and try something new with another company as far as IT is concerned. So what we did with Chapino is that uh, we just put an MX appliance in, nothing special. They just have a cable connection for their internet access. We put some switches in, so I'll go ahead and go into the switches section. So they have two different switches at this location. They have a switch that's called Toast. So as far as Toast is concerned, um, this is for their point of sale system, and this is for their printers for that point of sale system. Then we put a switch in that we just called Chapina switch, so that's for their corporate PCs. As a requirement for this particular install, they wanted a few different SSIDs. So they wanted a guest network that we set up for them. They wanted a private network that was just for their corporate-owned laptops. And what was kind of unique for us is they wanted a SSID um, that they wanted us to call Toast underscore secured. So for this particular Wi-Fi network, what they have is their servers have tablets, and their servers will take the orders from their customers, put the information on a tablet, then they'll hit send. So that information will go over their Wi-Fi network, go to their point of sale system. And what it also does is it sends um, that order to the kitchen so the cooks can immediately take it. So it was something that was put in to really streamline um, their ordering process and actually save them a ton of time. So I'm going to go ahead and select the splash page here. And, you know, part of their requirement was to actually do a guest network and they wanted some type of splash page. So you can actually set up a splash page in true Meraki fashion in just a few minutes by a couple clicks. We went a little bit further. You can set all kinds of you know parameters in here. You can put logos, the whole nine yards. You can even put the frequency in which the splash page would show up for that user. So we'll go ahead and preview this. So this is what the actual splash page looks like for Chapino. Uh, nothing real special, but a gentleman on my team did a nice terms and conditions page uh, for them. So he kind of went the extra mile on this part of the splash page. So let me go ahead and go back into our Meraki network. So another Meraki network that we have, we just call Comcast. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the access points in Comcast. So in in Comcast, basically this is just an outside you know connection for us to do various testing. So EIOS Comcast is for our data center team. So we connect to this particular SSID if we have to do any type of troubleshooting. And then we have an HD Comcast connection, so that's just for our help desk. So a unique situation that we got in um, a while ago is that a startup company, they wanted to rent space at our corporate location and they needed internet access, and of course, IT's always notified last minute. So luckily with Meraki, and luckily we had a few APs that were in stock, um, we grabbed a few APs, got them connected to the cloud, patched them down to a port where these uh, folks were working, and their business was up and running in a half hour. So, you know, typically if you had other solutions, it might take a little bit longer, or you might have to draw out some technical plans to actually plan for that. But with Meraki, we can simply set up an access point, plug it into a connection, and we're ready to go. So it's really, really cool that uh, we can do that with Meraki, and that's another reason that we chose them. So another thing that we really like about Meraki is the email alerts that they have. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to network wide and then I'm going to choose alerts. So right now we're in the section where we actually um, have all the alerts for the Comcast network. So if you can see, like we can set all different types of alerts. We can do network wide alerts, we can do wireless alerts, we can do switch alerts. You can really tailor it to your liking. You could set time intervals. You never know, it just all depends how your network functions and how chatty you want these alerts to be. So you can see like if a wireless gateway goes offline for 30 minutes, we're gonna get an email alert. And that might seem like, yeah, that's a good bit of time, but this is really just a test network we're on. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill into our actual corporate network. And you can see here that some of the parameters are slightly different. You know, if a wireless, you know, gateway goes offline, we get an email within five minutes. Um, so really cool stuff that you can set up. I'm going to bring up uh, one of the emails that we receive um, from Meraki uh, when we do get email alerts. So in this instance, we have an email alert from a rogue access point that was detected. So the SSID that it is uh, seeing is DWI phone. And so I'm guessing that this particular person enabled the hotspot on their phone. And actually what's kind of cool about this uh, particular alert is this person probably didn't realize that they had the hotspot enabled and they maybe walked out of the office area into another part of the building and actually two of our access points detected um, this particular SSID as being a road. So kind of a cool alert. Meraki makes it very simple as these, as these alerts are concerned. You don't have just a bunch of data that you have to sift through. It's very to the point. Um, one last thing I want to point out on the dashboard, if you scroll ahead, go ahead and scroll down to the bottom, um, there is a make a wish button here. So that make a wish button is pretty nice because Meraki, they love to hear customer feedback, and I'm going to go ahead and click on it. So if you have some type of feature that you want to see or something in a firmware update, you can request that here. So it's pretty cool that Meraki actually does that for their customers. So that does conclude the live demo um, portion of this uh, webinar. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Kristen to talk about the product family. Norm, thank you for such a fantastic presentation and demo. So at this point, I'm going to give a brief overview of Meraki's different product family. Next slide. So at Meraki, we offer a full stack of products. This includes our wireless access points, our security appliances, our switches for um, layer two and layer three, our enterprise mobility management products, our MI products, and our security cameras products. So the goal of all these products is to really offer a complete cloud-managed IT portfolio within a single pane of glass management, like you were able to see in today's demo. Next slide. So some of you on this webinar may be wondering what are the best next steps for learning more about Meraki. And we have three main recommendations. The first one is to check out our blog where we provide the latest and greatest information about Meraki. You can also register for a risk-free evaluation. And a third step um, that can get you a lot more information about Meraki is joining the Meraki community and reading the different posts that we have there. Next. Also, I would like to announce to everyone on today's webinar that right now we are running a promo that's very special. It's called Buy 5 Stream Live, and it's running from now until July 28th. And customers who purchase any combination of five high-density MR access points are also eligible to receive a free MV security camera that comes with a free three-year cloud management license. And accounts are eligible to receive up to two free MV cameras per account. And you can learn more about the terms and conditions at meraki.cisco.com slash buy five stream live. Next. 
So at this point in time, we would like to open up the floor to Q&A. So if you can just give us just a few moments to review the questions portal, and we will start asking them to the Pitt Ohio team. Okay, so I have the first question for the Pitt Ohio team, and it's what kinds of challenges did you face in different environments during implementation, and how did you overcome them? For example, um, taking a look at like different types of equipment, different types of VLANs across sites, et cetera. So the, uh, I mean, we really didn't have any major issues when we were implementing. It was just really design changes that we had. So, you know, with our old solution, we had lightweight access points that tunneled back, you know, directly back to our controller. So, essentially everything was on one LAN. So, with Meraki, we had to change things. Um, we had to set up different, uh, you know, I'll give our remote sites, um, for example. So, we had to set up additional sub-interfaces um, and pretty much different VLANs for the different networks. So, it was just really a design change there were some of the challenge, but even with that, those design changes were just a few, you know, configurations that we had to change on our end. So um, I would say that was the only kind of thing that we had to overcome. As I had mentioned before that, uh, you know, we had to come up with, with a solution for mobile device access and guest access, um, and we weren't really sure how we were going to do it, uh, but, you know, working with our Meraki team and our VAR, you know, we came up with a solution to do that by putting an MX100 in. Everything else is pretty easy with Meraki, though. It's just clicks instead of, you know, command line configurations. So the next question that we have for your team is, how did the Meraki products help you increase revenue? So we were kind of looking at different options. You know, we know that we had scales on our docks and, you know, we worked with another group within Pitt, Ohio, our application specialist, to come up with a solution of, you know, streamlining the way that we weigh freight. Usually we would have to pick up a pallet and put it on a scale and then weigh it from there. So, you know, we were looking at options of, you know, how can we weigh this freight even, you know, easier um, as far as, you know, putting, you know, moving freight on our dock essentially. So. You know, there are, you know, different solutions out there where you can pick up freight with a fork truck and actually weigh that freight. And then uh, from there, we found out there was a wireless option. Um, so we, you know, pretty much needed to find access points that were industrial access points and an access point that would really be able to, you know, tackle the weather because our docks are wide open. They don't have heat on them. So there's pretty extreme uh, temperatures on the dock. So luckily, Meraki does have like an industrial access point. The ones that we currently use are MR72s. Um, so we were able to generate the revenue by, you know, having a couple of things happen where there were solutions to pretty much streamline the way we weigh freight. But also, you know, we needed the Meraki access points on our dock to pretty much transmit that information back to our corporate location. So it really helped us generate a considerable amount of revenue. And you got to think we can really calculate the lost revenue by, you know, how much, you know, if we're over a ton of weight on freight, that's going to actually, you know, cost more fuel. So it was a great way for us to generate revenue. And anytime we implement a new technology, like I mentioned, we either try to reduce costs or just try to generate that revenue. So Norm, the next question that we have is, how does Meraki help with fleet management? And they want to know um, more information about how Meraki helps out with trucks being um, rolling IoT devices as well. So the IoT devices that we have um, at Pitt, Ohio, uh, they don't connect to our Meraki network at all. They're just cellular devices. So. Um, we had some talks about doing that. Uh, that's probably a project that's for us down the road.
Okay, so Norm, the next question that I have is, is the management console subscription-based? And, sub subscription and I, might throw, I might throw this back over to, we have James, who is our one of our um, product marketing um, specialists here, so he can answer that question. Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. Oh, yes. Hello, everyone. My name is James. I'm the product marketing manager for Switches. And uh, specific to that question, uh, yes, yes. Uh, it is a subscription. Uh, we consider that part of the license. So access to the dashboard is included, as well as uh, support and other things in that license. And then, Norm, the next question that I have for you is, um, Is did the pit team look into other vendors before going with Meraki? Yes, we did. Um, we looked at a bunch of different vendors. Um, the three that we narrowed it down to um, was Meraki, Cisco, um, and I can't, I think it was Arrowhive. Um, but we found out that uh, Meraki was the best fit for us for a bunch of different reasons. But with you know everything that I had mentioned before. Um, about the dashboard and how easy it is to configure everything was great. Um, but for us, we kind of ran into a few DR situations over the past couple of years. So, you know, we wanted to basically take that controller that was usually on-prem in our data center and move it to the cloud um, in case that we do run into another DR scenario where, you know, we really don't have to worry about the hardware or getting it replaced. Um, so that's one nice thing. Another nice thing is, too, is say we lose access to the cloud, right, with our access points, right? They're going to still broadcast SSIDs regardless of having connection to the cloud. So our wireless network will still be functional even though they don't have access to the controllers. Where other solutions, that's not the case. So the next question that I have for you guys is, do you use a lab to test firmware updates, or do you guys push them out as they come in? No, we just push them out. <laughs> we probably should do some testing, and I believe that you could, and maybe you want to just push firmware to one access point instead of doing the whole network. Um, I think you can do that. James, can you kind of talk to that portion of it? Um, but to kind of finish off, um, yeah, we just do the entire network because we haven't had any issues whatsoever with the firmware updates. And if you do, I mean, you could simply call into Meraki support and they can work with you to roll back. Hi, this is James. Uh, first, it's always excellent to be with the product. Is, uh, when it comes to working out for you, right? So, um, yeah, thank you for that, for that feedback. Uh, as far as updates in general, uh, yes, uh, you can actually, uh, especially on the Switch platform, uh, do some updates. updates. That means you can build a uh, test lab within your own dashboard. That's where you can take out the chat one, the audit, the OLM, and the OLM. So, what I'm going to say is that we're in the team to operate on the second for a fee, uh, you have the ability to uh, connect with uh, all of our platforms with the ability to do an update, and if for whatever reason things don't work out as expected, uh, you can actually roll back uh, that update and make sure that everything uh, everything is hunky dory before uh, before implementation is ready to take place. Yeah, I can I can also add to that too. So as far as our wireless networks are concerned. You know, we do cowboy. We probably shouldn't. We just go in and push the firmware updates. But for us, if we have wireless networks go down, it's not the end of the world. We can still wire in. And, you know, our users are very understanding as far as that is concerned. Really, our pain point is something that has to be kept up for us all the time is our phone system. So that's most important. Our wireless networks can be down. Um, we, of course, don't want them ever to be down. But also, you know, as part of our fork trucks that we have out there, what's nice about those is there is a fail safe. So if the fork trucks cannot connect back to our wireless network, they'll actually store that data until wireless connectivity um, becomes available again. So that's kind of the reason that we just go ahead and push it. And that being, you know, also that these firmware updates have, you know, gone so smoothly for us. 
So I think we have time for one more question. So the final question is, do you use the wireless APs in your terminals and docs for other transactions besides weight scale? Uh, yes. So um, at our terminals, um, on our docs, typically we have two MR72s. And then in the office area of the terminal, we have MR32. So um, we primary use, yes, is for our scales, but we also use them for people that have company-owned mobile devices um, to connect back. And um, sometimes we do have guests show up at our terminals that need guest access. So yeah, we still use it for a wide variety of reasons. Well, Norm, thank you so much for doing the presentation and demo of your Meraki network today. I think you did a fantastic job. And at this point in time, we will be um, ending the webinar. And if you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to the Meraki team. We're happy to put you in touch with anyone within our organization. And we hope that everyone enjoys the rest of their day.